All right, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I wanted today to talk about raw denoise processing. Now, when you take raw images on a DSLR, particularly like the R5, there's gonna be noise in that image. And I've noticed personally with my own photography while switching to the R5 from the D850, I'm more comfortable, it seems, shooting with a higher ISO. And that's because I'm kind of forced into it. Some of the RF lenses, as I mentioned in a previous video, come with pretty narrow, widest apertures. So if you take, for example, my default wildlife lens, the RF 100 to 500, at its widest aperture when shooting at 500 millimeters, that's an F 7.1 lens. And when paired with the R5, that's resulting with a fair amount of noise in my images. I'm finding myself shooting at 500 millimeters very often. I'm finding myself shooting at 7.1 very often. The lens is extraordinarily sharp at that, at that setting. On the other hand, I'm shooting at 12,800 12, ISO quite often, and I'm ending up with fairly noisy images. So today I want to talk through two third-party applications that are useful for processing specifically raw images right out of the camera. The first one is Topaz Denoise AI, and the second one is DxO Pure Raw 2. These are two products. Topaz runs at about $80 for a lifetime uh, registration or lifetime verification. It comes with, I think, two different updates, and then you have to pay to update after that. And DxO Pure Raw costs much more, costs $130 also for a lifetime verification. So two technologies. I believe they both offer trials. I previously already owned the Topaz Denoise software because I was using that as an ex post processing. So I would process it in Lightroom and then output the file to Topaz Denoise and process it as a kind of after effect. And then I have used the trial version, which is a 30 day completely functional trial of DxO Pure Raw 2. And so I would encourage you to try the trials, frankly, before you pay $80 or $130 for either of these technologies. But if you don't want to try the trials, I will give you an example and show you how I'm comparing the two of these. With one image, I'll process it both in uh, DxO Pure Raw 2 and I'll process in Topaz Denoise. We'll compare the difference between the two. I'm going to use the fully automated settings in both cases. So both of them have different levels of customization that you can do. Uh, Topaz Denoise is a slightly more customizable than DxO Pure Raw 2, but in this case, I'm just going to compare the fully automated approach that you would use for both of these um, without kind of adjusting or tweaking these. Because frankly, you know, you could do basically like infinite level of combinations here, and I don't want to go through all of those different permutations. So this is basically the set it and forget it way of processing a raw image, and let's compare the two of them. So let's hop right into it. This is a photo of the common grackle. Now, I actually, when I photographed this the other day uh, in my nearby kind of urban park, I thought this was a crow at first. Um, it kind of caught my eye because it had such a dramatic eye. And then I realized crows have black eyes and the common grackle has a white eye. So anyway, it's a, it's a common grackle. It has the same kind of iridescence in the feathers that you find in hummingbirds and other, other birds like that. So these are pure black in most settings, but you can see kind of the iridescence in the blue feathers around its neck here. So anyway, this setting, this, this shot was taken at 500 millimeters, as I mentioned, on the RF 100 to 500, 7.1 aperture and 12,800 for uh, the ISO speed. Um, finally, it was exposure time, just in case you're interested, of one two thousandth of a second on shutter priority with auto exposure. So I, I like this image. It's actually really nicely kind of exposed um, and it looks pretty good and it's not gonna take much editing and the eye is really dramatic. So it's a cool image, but there's actually a fair amount of noise. Now, the first thing I wanted to point out is when you open up a raw image in preview, which is an application that you stand, you know, standard application on a Macintosh, on a Mac, um, it's actually not the raw file. It's a JPEG, I believe, version of that file. And, and we can tell that because there actually isn't that much noise in this image. So if you look here, um, you know, there isn't a ton of noise. You see noise in the shadows here and kind of irregular noise, not a lot of noise in the highlights here, but noise in the shadows. And so there actually is a fair amount of processing on this image. And, and the reason why I know that is because if we close out of this and we open up Topaz Denoise, which is gonna be the first software we're gonna look at here. 
um, I've already loaded, it's the same image that's loaded in here. You can see that it actually looks pretty different. It's a more dull image here. Um, the highlights aren't as dramatic. Uh, it's a flat image, which is what we actually would expect out of a raw image. And this is more indicative of the actual raw file. Now, any raw file, by the way, that you're visualizing on a computer, it's going to have to convert that into some, we're only seeing some of the data. We can't see all of the data. But this is a little bit more consistent with what I'd expect out of a raw file. And you'll note, if we zoom in at 100%, there is quite a lot of noise in this image. So it's toggling here between the, the raw processed version and the unprocessed version. But if we look at the original here, you can see way more noise, particularly in the shadows, but throughout the whole image than we saw in the preview version. So anyway, this is more indicative of the raw file, fair amount of noise coming right out of the camera. And this is what we want to get rid of. So I am going to leave the model preferences here that you can see in the right column. I've set it to raw, which is this function here and I have set it to model preferences auto. So this is automatically detecting the preferences and I'm gonna leave pro post processing off for this test. So we're gonna leave it as is and I am going to select output. So we're gonna go ahead and output that image and see what we end up with as a processed image. All right. Okay, so topaz denoise is completed. It took about 35 seconds. And now we're going to run the exact, I'm going to close that actually. So now we're going to run the exact same thing in DxO Pure Raw. So I've loaded the image into DxO Pure Raw. That's the application here. You can see the image right here. And we have, once the image is loaded, you can click process photos. So I'm going to click to process the photo after selecting it. And it gives you, again, a couple different options. So we have HQ, Prime, and D Prime. D Prime is kind of like, an, it tells you here a little bit of information, but D Prime is kind of an AI-enhanced approach to um, removing noise, which is what we want. Optical corrections, now this is an option here. I'm going to leave these as standard, which is it's going to address for global lens sharpening. So this is sharpening across the entire um, image based on weaknesses in the lens. And then it's also going to address for lens distortion. This is a nice thing about DxO in general is DxO is a company that's been testing lenses a lot and mapping uh, focal uh, capabilities of each lens and distortion of lenses. So they have a really uh, extensive database of this. And so I'm going to output uh, as a DNG file and I'm just going to um, put in a custom folder here or put in uh, the original photo, so it's not too complicated. Uh, one thing that's interesting about the way that they process it in DxO Pure Raw is, is this is a much larger file size. Now, I'll talk about that a little bit at the end. There's adding a lot of information into it as part of the post-processing, and we can compare the file size. This is kind of a final process here. So I'm going to go ahead and select Process. Again, we've basically selected all auto settings for both of these, so not much of a difference between the two of them as far as customizing the output. So this is taking a little bit longer, maybe five seconds or so. So it's looking at, it's gonna run about 40 seconds or 45 seconds. So again, we'll we'll cut to the kind of chase here and, and cut out all of this. Okay, so Pure Raw has now completed the processing. And, and one of the things I, I really like about Pure Raw and the interface is just they have this view results tab. And so if you push view results, it takes a second to load it, but there's something very gratifying about removing noise from the image and then just seeing the processed result and seeing what difference it made. It's also very nice for comparing the differences. We can't compare um, Topaz denoise in the same way, so I'm not going to spend too much time doing this. Rather, I'll compare the two in Lightroom, but I did want to just show you this feature because it's pretty cool. So here you see, let's go one to one here. It's 100% zoom. So that's the pre-image here uh, that was the raw file, and then you can see this slider, which is just so fun to go over and you can see that's the process image. So completely removing a lot of that noise. I mean, it's really amazing to see it in effect here, how it processes it. You also see that the distortion in the lens has been adjusted and they've definitely added the sharpening back into the image. So it's not a totally raw image. There is a fair amount of sharpening. So this is something that both Pure Raw and Topaz are doing. They're adding some sharpening into the image when you're processing the raw. Now you can select that, you can turn that off if you want, but 
here we're comparing automated processes here, so I figured I'd just leave on the kind of auto settings for both of the two. Okay, everyone, so um, now we've got both of them loaded up here and uh, we can compare the two. So I thought Lightroom would be a convenient application for comparing uh, both the output from Topaz and from DxO Pure Raw 2 because it's kind of a um, third party application that can compare the two as opposed to viewing them in their native environment within the app. So um, on the right here, you have the Topaz Denoise image. So that's this one that's been processed. So maybe we'll go like that frame here. And then on the left here, we have the one that came out of DxO Pure Raw 2. And I will try my best to tee them up exactly the same. All right, cool. So let's look at the differences here. And, and I do see quite a few differences, actually. The first thing that I think is really noticeable here is the color difference between the two. The pure raw image on the left here has um, a much more kind of uh, bluish uh, hue in general, but particularly in the greens. You can see the greens here are more yellow. Um, and uh, just a different tone than the, the DxO Pure Raw 2. Now we're comparing 100% zooms on both of these images, so they're very, you know, we've gone in quite a bit, but I think for me, you know, one of the most glaring differences here as we look at the two is in the eye. So if you look here at the eye on the Topaz Denoise, you see a lot of artifacting. And this is actually my issue that I've had as an ex post processing tool with Topaz in general. I've noticed just a crispiness to the images. The images look like they've been processed and enhanced. And I suspect there's ways to kind of toggle the settings to address this. But here we are in the auto settings, and this is the look that we're getting. If you look at the Pure Raw 2, it may not be quite as sharp but um, it doesn't have any of that artifacting, or at least a lot less than it does um, in the Topaz image. And I think that's actually pretty important to me um, in terms of the quality of the image. I think the noise in general, like for example, if you look at the noise kind of around this shadowy area where we're going from a, a shadow in the dark uh, gray color to the green color, you know, that actually looks pretty similar to me across the two. I think there's a little bit of a difference in the kind of artifacting here. Um, there's kind of a pattern to the artifacting. This is really pixel peeping, but I do think this matters. There's kind of this pattern here that looks again kind of crispy, whereas you don't really have that in the Pure Raw image. I think the Pure Raw image may be a little bit more noisy. Um, you know, you can see the noise kind of left over here in the shadows here compared to here. But another area where you might see a difference is if you look in this zone right here in both image is, you know, you can see here there's maybe a little bit more noise. It's not quite as sharp, but it looks just like noise. It looks like digital noise that we kind of account for and we are okay with in our digital images. Whereas here in the Topaz image, it, it honestly looks to me like uh, sharpening noise, like artifacting. And I really don't like that. I think it looks um, fake. And, um, and that's a problem I have. The other thing to look at here that's really interesting when it comes to um, uh, birds that can be useful here is if you look at areas where there are feathers, where there's feathers on background. This is an area where these denoise applications, it's really pushing the AI to try to be as sharp as possible and, uh, and be as smart as possible to get around each of the feathers. And that's a challenge for these systems. And you can see here when you look at the Topaz image, you can see again this artifacting around the feathers. It doesn't quite know what to do with the feathers. Let's see if we have that same thing. It's just not the case. We do not have that in the DxO Pure Raw. The image here, it just doesn't look quite as artifact. It looks like noise. So let's let's look again at. Um, let's zoom out here because I think you know. I don't want to pixel peep too much. So if you look at the images kind of in aggregate against each other, it looks to me like the Topaz Noise image is a little bit um, brighter. It's kind of brighter out of the box. Maybe they've brightened up the exposure a little bit, whereas the um, Pure Raw image is, is a little bit duller and requires maybe a little bit more editing. Like look, for example, around the feathers here, like this zone here. Um, you know, this is a little bit darker. This blue is darker. It needs to be brought up maybe a little bit in editing. Um, but as far as that artifacting goes, I think that's an issue. And the reason why this is a problem is because it, it looks fine, I think, you know, when you look at it here. Um, but when you zoom in, 
um, like you would maybe in a crop, you really start to see that, that excessive crispiness in the blues here is also present here. And I'd rather an image that's a little bit less sharp, but, but not um, overtly um, edited in quite the same way as the Topaz product is. And so uh, from my perspective, when looking at this, this kind of confirms what I was anecdotally kind of experiencing a little bit, is that the DxO Pure Raw 2 image is a little less sharp right out of the processing, but it also is less crispy. And there's a little less artifacting. In fact, I don't see much artifacting at all in the DxO uh, Pure Raw image. Whereas in the Topaz Noise, I see kind of excessive sharpening and it looks very um, overdone to me. And that's the difference that I'm seeing in these two images. Okay, so one thing I mentioned before is that the file size of these, of these processed images is much larger than the original image. Okay, so if we look at the original image and then compare it to the file sizes for the DxO Pure Raw 2 image and the Topaz Noise images, that can share a little bit more insight into the size of these files. So the original image here is um, 65 megabytes, so 64.8 megabytes for the original raw file, which is huge. You know, it's already quite large. The DxO um, pure raw image, so this is the deep prime, this is the processing that we did on it. That image after processing in DxO pure raw 2 is 175 megabytes, so it's ballooned by 110 megabytes in terms of its file size, which is pretty incredible. It's almost tripled in size as part of the processing. The Topaz Denoise image is even larger, which is surprising to me. I actually thought the DxO Pure Raw image was going to be bigger. The Topaz Denoise image is 269 megabytes. So it went from 65 megabytes to 269, which is crazy. So it's quadrupled in size. So you have one image is tripled in size and one is quadrupled. So it's a big file size. It's a it's a quarter of a gigabyte if you are processing one raw image in Topaz Denoise. Now, it's not like the Pure Raw is that much smaller, but it's at least only, you know, uh, a fifth of a gigabyte <laughs> instead. So what does that say? Well, that says um, when you're doing this type of technique, when you're taking an image that's 12,800, hundred uh, ISO and there's a fair amount of noise and you're trying to get out of that a noiseless image that you can edit in Lightroom or Photoshop. It behooves you to only do that for a handful of images. Unless you have unlimited storage space, you got to go through all the files that you took, all the shots you took. You got to pick the prime ones that you really want to process and you got to process those through these types of programs. And it's only those files that you bring into Lightroom and edit. And that's how I've changed my workflow to account for this much larger file size. But I'll tell you, after doing this review, um, my personal preference, I think, is with the DxO Pure Raw 2. Now, is it worth $130 versus $80? I mean, that's, that's a big question. Personally, I think I'd rather pay $130 and use the software for five years or more um, and be really happy with the product than always see that artifacting and being a little bit upset with the Topaz Denoise product. But that's my own personal preference. you got to take into account. But hopefully today has shown you that they do produce different products. All things are not equal. You can take the same image, put it into both programs, and you'll get a different color profile for the image out of the raw processing. You'll have different noise um, reduction and, um, and the overall product that you're bringing into Lightroom or Photoshop that you're going to edit is going to be a little bit different. But if I were to advise you and my personal preference, I would say go with DxO Pure Raw 2 because there's a little bit less artifacting. And again, this is right out of the box in quotes. This is right out of the processing, you know, using auto settings and not adjusting for anything. It is entirely possible that if you tweak Topaz Denoise, you might be able to get a product that's fairly similar to the DxO Pure Raw 2 product. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you do or what you think is uh, your, the best process here. I'm actually curious if any of you are working Topaz Denoise in as an after effect 
um, beyond using kind of a processing for raw? Or do you think that it's better to edit the raw file in Lightroom and then only process it and say to opaz denoise after you've edited it? So I'm curious what you think and, and if uh, this is helpful to you. So let me know if it was, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel because I hope to do more things like this as I go through this journey of photography, particularly with wildlife photography. So be well, take care. Don't forget to get outside and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.